everybody, and welcome to Dragon Ball Z League Season 2022, Week 9, Episode 4, the final episode of Week 9. I am your host, Dorgard, with my ever gallant co host, G. Yeah, hello. So, yeah, it's been a pretty interesting week so far. All the divisionals are done, the standings have sh been slightly shooken up. Um, it'll be interesting to see where things go in these final two matches. Yeah, let's start off with match seven. We have Cinema versus Cold Kingdom. Cinema with a four and four record, dead even, and Cold with a six and two record. One of the stronger teams so far into the season. I think both of these teams are insane, though. We've got Keep in mind, Colts, I think, on a two game loss streak, though. So True. Cinema could come in and hit them while they are doing a little bit of you know, uh, adjustments on their team. They might still be in the middle of finding what fixes their characters, or they might have gotten them fixed. That'll be what we have to find out this week, so let's get rolling into that. Yep. Yeah. Okay, number one, Star most voted all-star. <laughs> Zarbon! Right, pretty boy Zarbon. Base Zarbon. Gogeta starting off for Cinema with Attack Plus One, Eternal Life, Fighting Spirit, Lane Energy, um, Chiaotzu AI, versus... The number one all-star with defense plus two, Dende Ceiling, serious, quick, fast attack, land energy, and Piccolo AI. This could be rough. Now, Zarbon's been pretty dominant uh, this entire season, but Gogeta does have the ability to stack on damage. He's just... I always view him as being kind of inconsistent with his defense, and that's always seemed to be the issue with him. Having a one-cost finish sign means his damage output is, like, one of the highest. This is Big Bang Kamehameha can do the same amount of damage with some finish signs and charged up. And then, of course, he has an explosive wave, or super explosive wave, which is incredibly hard to dodge. One of the best b as well. Yeah. He's already starting off good, hitting two of those big bang attacks. I think trying to get those finish signs off. And there goes Arbon with his uh, grab and another B2 from him. Just Arbon more on that kind of defensive, uh, if I live, I'll kill you eventually. That strikes me. Yeah. He's got a very similar mindset to what a TN or Solid has got going. You know. Last, get a little bit of extra damage from the yellow cards, but really you're here to do uh, to chip away, little by little. Yeah, and uh, Gogeta holding his lead so far. Zarbon fighting back, trying to show off why he is the one. That's an ultimate, oh, and it hits. This, should, I don't think it'll finish fail. him because he has what defense was too late, right? He has defense, and he has two, no finish and... stacks on. No finish sign, yeah. doesn't have super pluses, 13 k Literally one finish sign stack and that kills, but the melee combo follow-up will do it. And Zarbon showing why he is the 20k all-star of 2020. <laughs> that wasn't even 20k, that was like 14. That was um, a rough showing, but here's another all-star in final form cooler coming in with attack plus oh, 2 defense plus. 3D all-star spot stealing team, I'll tell you what. <laughs> Oh, Ooh, Death hit. Chaser, max power mode too. He's gonna do heavy damage. He's coming in with attack plus two, defense minus one, then they ceiling, power rage, lane energy, savior, and Majin Buu AI being unbelievably aggressive out the gate. So, uh, Final Form Cooler is a weird one. He has incredibly high damage Whoa. B2s, but incredibly awkward B2s to use. Death Beam being very small, but him his being arguably one of the strongest hitting ones, and a Death Chaser being incredibly strong, but has no tracking. Yeah, he is uh, a big old brute, but not... He, he can have his offers if nothing is connected. Oh, the poll has come through. We have poll at 68% and cinema at 31%. Hyper Tornado gets punched out. You don't see that very often. He becomes immune to all damage if it starts off full. So, good call my Cooler. Yeah, Cooler's got his work cut out for him. He's got a lot he needs to do to get pulled back in this match. But, as I said before, he is a juggernaut of a character. And it's certainly tools. He's already doing so. Psychokinesis. And just falls away. Pycons in with T plus one, launches support power rage, light body savior, and freeze eye. And he's doing good work in the melee department, even though he's not really built for it. 
Vincent Deche, so it does have tracking, but if it does, it is uh, one of the more minimal ones. I've definitely seen it miss a lot. It's a weird one. Maybe it's one that has not as long of a distance, and that's why I think it has more tracking, because it doesn't quite go cross map, per se. I don't know. His Death Chaser has some weird properties, because he's so massive, too. Yeah, he is a big, big character. And he's doing a pretty good job overall, considering he took down most of Gogeta before he tagged, and now he's staying even with Python, one of the stronger characters in the league. Yeah, I mean, he's been great this season. Last season, he really helped GT go far, and this season, he was doing that with Cinema, but he finally goes down, and as we were saying about Cooler, he is a heavy hitter. Just does damage in every way possible. In comes Fasha with defense plus two, then they see him combo mask, so rain energy, quick fast attack, a Bowie ring limiter, so no way for him. And Goku <laughs> attack. Oh, unfortunate. All of Hell's mini jelly bean moves <laughs> are useless. And there and we go. Good call from her. She is always so good about using that B2 at the right time. Yeah, I mean, he also has a defense minus with the attack plus two. Oh, a supernova. That's gonna hurt. <laughs> she kind of like does doesn't get flinched, but it. she took yeah. 15k, so damage done. Damage done. Uh, Mecha with defense plus three attack minus one, light body, savior, quick fast attack, launcher support on the Ikita AI. And a good early lead against Fasha with that ultimate, not really doing much after that. She's been pretty aggressive. So this is the unfortunate thing that has happened with Mecha Frieza in the past. Um, he's such a good old spammer for like half the season. So we hit the halfway mark and he started falling off. So they're like, okay, how can we keep his damage up now that he's like not consistently old spamming? So this defense build's coming in to try to kind of fix that up, keep him in there longer. The idea is that if he lives, he'll do more, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, give him more time to get back up to max power mode or get his B2s off. He's doing okay, but like, the match is kind of stalled. Yeah, I mean, he's doing damage to Pasha. Pasha's full health like in the game, so... Oh, no, the no. ult in his melee is whittling her down. She's looking for a tag, maybe? The main thing that he's done is he has stopped Fasha from killing him, which is a very important <laughs> very step. Important. With all the tag Cinema has done, I can't tell if they're in the lead or not. This is... they might be even at this point in terms of health. Yeah, it's a... Uh, it's an interesting one, but we still have the EL users on both sides. Fasha tag. tagging out to guy, and he's gonna Good have two tag. bars! In oh, comes the final characters from both teams. Zangya with attack plus two, defense minus one, dragon spear, rush blast two, serious combo master, and Yadrobia. And King Cold with attack plus one, eternal life, serious life body, and Freeze AI. Zangya, I think, has been pretty good for at least her standards. I don't know if I'd consider her on the same level as King Cold. He's been a 52 character for a couple seasons. And I think he's like 40, 45 now. Oh, and that's her ult. That's this ult. is gonna do a good chunk of damage. You know, you keep dissing Zangaya, and she's just going in all of a sudden. Nice. There, so long. Hey, ultimate. That's really strong for her. King's dignity. Extra stats, charge and melee. No max oh. power mode because of that, though. Yeah, that's not the worst sure. of it, though. Well, that's not gonna do it. At least he says don't move when he uses it. He tries to stop them. <laughs> Just don't move, yeah. please. I swear, I never hit this thing. By the king's decree, I tell you not to move. He's used to his fighting his loyal subjects. Zengaya is not a loyal subject. He's not having a very good match. Just jinxed it by talking about her videos. I guess I did. I don't know. I mean, she's been doing amazing in her max power mode. If anything, King Cole just needs to tag. Play that tag game, get Mecha in here with his ultimate, and see if Mecha can help close this gap. Because it has widened to difficult degree. That's gonna kill if it is. Well, a Mecha Frieza ult might just straight up kill her, because she has the defense minus. It did 15k to a, uh, to a defense plus 2 user from Masha. There's no follow up, not enough key. Okay, uh, Mecha. Kong 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 also help. Definitely in Eventually. Supernova killing range. 
This will do it. She's out. Yeah. Well, this is an interesting on match. One. There's still two characters left, but neither are full health. Bars. Health bar is even, but I don't think Mecha is healing to match their kill. No, he doesn't. He's gonna have to get that charge off. He has the Blast Fox for max power mode. If he can do it, he can kill these characters with one V2 right alone. Well, uh, so counterpoint. counterpoint. He probably needs to kill Fosha without using them, because he only has four, and I don't think he can afford to get a key in minus a conscription death. That's a good point. So he kinda needs to like manually charge and kill Fosha with like a two bar B2 or something, like if he can charge to five, hit a two bar, and then have the rest for max car mode, that would be great. Doesn't Looks matter, like he's a, going for it. I mean, a, maybe nope, tag, just, you know what, halt. Just halt. He just needs to hit a B2, but an ult would definitely kill. Boy, C3 Same for three. Oh, he's trying to kill Gogeta without using his max car mode, but that's not gonna work out, I think. This man is a. Uh, He's a long survivor. He's been in for a good while for a reason. And he loses it, but he can charge out of his key minus. He's, He's wasting his key. Blast. Oh, charged out of it. That's a good start. That's not gonna hit. He's a good try though. Oh, we well, got behind him. This, this is tough. Next hit wins, and yep, there we go. Just try to keep up. A, good a good try, try by uh, Cole, but. King Cole just getting decimated by Zangaya led to a uh, relatively confident win by Cinema. Yeah, uh, I apologize for that, Cole. <laughs> Blame uh, all your stuff on staff as I do, and you guys will start winning. I swear. You can tell I'm 2-7. and seven. Yeah. Aside from that, really close match, and while Cinema does have the, the worst record between the two teams right now, I don't think they're actually that much of a weaker team considering the insane roster they have. With how many loans and FAs they are, uh, with their loan and FA characters that they brought in. And Zagaya, clearly a better character than I gave her credit for. Yeah, so Cinema turning around a recent losing streak where Cold is continuing into the depths of their losing streak. So, week 10 will be in three weeks. Be a big change for what might happen with these teams. So, shall we move on to the final match of this stream and this episode? Let's round this out. So match number eight, we have two teams that um, you'd think would be on the weaker side due to the earliness of their characters in the sagas, but are both having incredibly good seasons as uh, almost per usual for Namek, but Kaiju having an excellent season at five and three. So this could be a slobber knocker of a match. Mm -hmm. Kaiju's always been a bit um, sporadic in how they do from season to season, but uh, a good start for them now. Namek, always a terrifying team if they have uh, Nova and Lake Piccolo doing their usual deals. And Nova's in this week, so we'll see. Yeah, let's get rolling right in. Two very uh, interesting starters from both teams. Yeah, Nova with key plus one, launches spore lane, energy, indignation, light body, quick fast attack, on TNAI, his usual spam build, or a similar one at least. And Turles, the newest addition back onto Kaiju with attack plus two, defense minus one, serious lane energy, not to go light body, demo healing, and TNA. Really think you can stand up to me? So melee versus spam, I'm gonna give the advantage to Nova just because it's Nova, but Turles can do good work. Oh yeah, Turles is on a very heavy offense build, so if Nova starts getting the spam field melt faster than most characters due to the defense minus, but... His melee, on the other hand, side will do quite a lot of damage, so... Yeah. And Thurlis so keeps him from uh, charging, which... He's not doing a great job right now, but <laughs> I guess Nova doesn't care. It does require at least three from Nova to get his first attack. Dodge? Big ball, but you can get out of it. Yeah, it's not as big as it used to be. That's for sure. Yeah, Turles, if he gets a grab off, it'll hurt a lot more seeing as how he's all this attack plus and he has Master Yeah, I think the main idea with him is, now he has a good 
throw in base, but it's if he gets into A, which you can get onto regardless of that, his throws will do B2 oh, that's level. Not work. That's not gonna work. Just like a circus event, he goes right through the the circle, except he's the one on fire this time. I wonder if Bali would work there. I have no idea. I would assume that Nova's just good, but the, the rushes Nova weird, make him or the, the ping attacks have weird things they lose to. Not Nova's. Nova's and Pycons and 100% Frieza's are immune to everything. Well, there you have it. Now, uh, Turles doing, great doing an excellent job against and the attack. character who took out like a half a team last week. Maybe not the first person to tag into, though, knowing what his build is. It's gonna hit, though. And out goes Nova. A good start for Kaiju. They have a one bar lead in the back thanks to the tag. Scatter in with T plus 2 Super Mario 1, Serious Mass Blast, and Eternal Life. Why? King Piccolo coming in with the pack plus 1, then they stay in Kyle Lake's base, take it on Chalkswear. So for those that maybe didn't catch it, Scouter, uh, whether on purpose or not, though I assume not, is on default AI. Uh, he's been on yes. Krillin AI all season, so that's why I say most likely an accident, probably a copy in here if it happens. Uh, I almost turned in my build to all my characters having, uh, like, Majibu AI AI. It just happens sometimes, so... He's not doing too bad, though, as we said. Default AI, a notorious one for being a little more... Funky in its decision. Yeah, my experience with Scouter is he's gonna, he's still gonna spam. Default AI makes him spam. He'll, he won't be too disciplined. Funny enough, I don't think they have key plus two on him because he spams. It just seems to make the AIs more aggressive. Because he has a really rough B2 cost. His beam costs four. Uh, so it's like, it does a lot of damage because of that. But that's like all of your key. So it is a hard one to get to. And then his rush is three, and I think it's a straight line. Or minimal track. Her name is Drum. That hits with max power mode. Yeah. Meanwhile, King Piccolo over here just totally not doing too much. No, yeah, he's trying to turn that around. If he can get a couple more B2s in, but honestly, an early tag would be the That's best. That could kill. Yeah, I think that's gonna kill. Well, yeah. He has in the, he has the same soul. Like I said, in that yeah, I just didn't know if there's any defense on King Piccolo. He's a neutral defense character. Any extra yeah. defense? He, There's also uh, a super minus. Mm -hmm. uh, early Piccolo with defense plus two, then they feeling power rage, land energy, and Broly AI. I know Garlic Panic gets dodged. Yeah, and uh, finally the Saiyan Soul running out, but man, Scouter, apparently this is his new ad because he's running a train on Namek, and I believe that was the build on King Piccolo he got an elite in the preseason with, and they kind of shelved it, not to like overuse it, and brought it back out in this week, and it just didn't quite do what they were hoping it would do. There goes Piccolo chasing him down. We had like nice. a good 7 10. Yeah, good time. Good time to just deal his damage because uh, Scouter is currently running a rampage on his team. And they do not have Nuova anymore, and Late Piccolo is not in, so they're, you know, arguing the are, are, Yeah, Nail and Early Piccolo aren't horrible by any means, but they're not the characters you want to rely on to close out the early losing that. Especially when you have somebody like Bardock with the Super Plus One. There he goes with his Super Plus One Saber Indignation, Fighting Spirit, Quick Fast, Stag Life, and Sport, and how to AI build. And taking out early Piccolo quick. Yeah, they still have, you know, Adult Go On in the back. Yeah, a pretty terrifying character. On the Super Plus Two build, and he has more, arguably the best two Barbies in the game, so. Nail's got his work cut out. Flasher. He's coming in with Super Plus One to beat the Secret Art, Indignation, Fighting Spirit, Life Body, Savior, Arm, Yagurobi, Eye, and a full power. It's punched. Unfortunately, he needed that damage. 
I mean, he can still do this. It's not impossible, but he's he needs to go elite, basically. Oh, no, basically. Statistically. I don't remember how much HP the Taj character has. Like, what bar, but when it's a gel. Ah, oh, okay, okay, then probably. Yeah, the lead. Let's see if we get an elite now. He has the ability to do it, especially with max power mode. Even without the healing, it's full bar bar uh, Bardock and full health uh, future, and then one bar of two characters, so it's just 100k without healing, right? Uh, yeah. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Step one oh. complete, take out Bardock. Really well uh, done. Step as well. two of four, though. This is the tough part. Oh, we got his oh wait, they had, that was the oh, first Kaiju to go down. Yeah, they have two bars. That's what I was saying. Scouter tag. I thought he had one bar, but he actually has two, so it's even worse. Now, this is Nail. And he sees and a coffin, and he knows to, what to, to do. Four man. Nail needs to four man. That's. Good luck, buddy. Not take any more of those. And he's dead. Yeah, that's it. Right, he's alive, but he's dead. Yeah, no healing. He's not gonna <laughs> survive it. You tried he to tried. backdash me? Well, um, Valiant effort by Nail. Yeah, congratulations to Kaiju on finding Vegeta's new AI. Yeah, apparently that was the fix that they didn't need because he was doing just fine this season. Yeah, uh, I don't know. Quite we got funny. lucky on that, I guess. Was a uh, an interesting match to say the least, but good. Yeah, good. Good job, Kaiju, keeping in their winning ways. Namek, not too bad, but obviously not what they were looking for. Um, becoming though a lot better for GT with the GT's win today. That puts them to three and six. So Namek being at four and five means that GT is on their tail quite heavily now. Uh, Royals and Cold also lost, so the GT being the only one to win in East Kai is quite great. Obviously, North Kai is almost exactly in that same order, but ED got a win. Uh, West Kai is a lot closer now uh, because Budokai got their win, so that and Derp lost, so that puts them tied. Yep. And Cinema won Tokyo and Kaiju won. won, so and Sentai won as well, didn't they not? Everyone won. Uh, everybody they? won in South Kai, so nothing changes they're just moving the south guy is rough but everything's within other two reasons. wins of each other so things can drastically change in a week or two in two weeks nothing is set yeah south guy is still very up there and no team's done both their divisionals yet i believe so there's still or all three mm -hmm. of their divisionals so there's still opportunities to create tie-breaking uh separations so yep yep uh one last note as a reminder, before uh, we cap off this stream, next week is going to be the Sweeper Games stream. We're starting our All-Star break for the next two weeks. Next week is Sweeper Games. Look out for that. Week after that is going to be the two new events. Hop in the Discord if you want to see all the details early. We'll explain it more next week as well. And we'll wrap it all up in the second week with that All-Star battle. Those 10 All-Stars that we will be able to Long story short, the next two weeks are league content, but they are not main week content. So the results yes. are to look at other things. Uh, it's, it's the mid-season break. It happens every year. So if you're new, prepare to enjoy. They are very enjoyable events and are still quite competitive. And, of course, when we come back, it'll give teams a little bit of uh, you know a little bit of a break to kind of fix up the teams on losing streak come with ideas as well as the teams on winning streak to try to maintain their hold so any final remarks g join us next week yeah we'll see you guys next week same time same place if you want to be notified hit the bell icon like share subscribe check out the description for links to the discord or you can see more in depth uh and the discussions for the events, the website, which has the, uh, which is kind of the wiki, the TikTok, and the Twitter for more information and shorts. And as always, please remember to leave a comment on your favorite moment from matches seven or eight with a timestamp. We love to know what you guys enjoy. And with that, I've been Dor. And I've been G. And we'll catch you guys next week for the Sweeper Games. Bye bye.